Drop. These are uh, Ramona Gardens housing projects. I grew up here. My mom, she worked for the local like pharmacy they had right here. My dad, he worked maintaining all the houses and stuff like that, like going around with a little cart. What's it like growing up here? It's a scary, fun, hazard. That's like the main gang, I guess, around here. Um, my dad is actually from there. We had to move away. That's one of the main reasons why we moved. Seen there's a lot of stuff to get into and he didn't want me to, <clears throat> to go that way. Like kids my age, like selling drugs and then doing drugs and fuck that, dude. I was not about that. I didn't like that, dude. I didn't want to sell no drugs to nobody. <laughs> it sucks, dude. Like my cousin recently, he got shot like five times just because he was somewhere else and they told him where was he from and he told him he was from here and they shot him, boom, boom, boom. But luckily they shot him like nowhere vital, so. He, he, he survived, yeah. Your first skating was like on these sidewalks right here? Yeah, dude. Dude, I remember the funnest part was going down like the hill. Feeling that speed of like not having to push and just going fast was like, oh shoot, it's trippy. You know, a lot of kids, they don't, they don't really find what they want to like to do, what they actually love to do. You don't got to be in a gang. You could just be in a gang of skaters with no letters. <laughs> That's why it's good that they have the other park right here, Hazard Park, because kids don't have to go through like different neighborhoods and all that stuff just to get to that park. So good though to have a skate park right here. Yeah, Vincent doesn't skate like a like a kid, like a young person. He skates like he's been. He has like a very mature style. Yeah, like that's like, but it's like wild, but like you know, it looks like it's like. Like yeah, when I seen his sponsor awesome. me tape that Sam was flowing around, I was like, dude, track this dude down. Smythe asked me if I wanted to get any boards. He saw me riding a girl board. I was stoked, but I couldn't really like believe it. I don't know. Because I always thought that company was so hard to get on, you know, like those companies, there's constantly people, I'm sure, sending in sponsor me tapes and stuff like that. The hardest thing to track that dude down because I guess he won like that that Lockwood contest. Got a free phone, so he had that phone for like a week. Then Sam couldn't get a hold of him. He like told him, like, yo, we want to hook you up and start giving you boards. But it was because like his the, that phone that he got was like already done with, you know, it was like a prepaid phone. And I remember telling him, like, dude, you gotta track this dude down. This is this dude's perfect for chocolate, you know. I think that's why we liked Vincent, because he reminded us of that kind of like just raw LA street skater. He skates fast had a unique style. That's totally how like Gabriel and Paulo were. Like I always wonder what happened to like Gabriel Rodriguez. Like he was so sick. So I always wondered what happened to him and then Paulo Diaz, you know? <laughs> I always wonder. It was a trip, okay? It's, it's like back then, um, they knew that I was, you know, recording music. Back then I recorded with Beck. I had, I had opened up for the Beastie Boys at the, ballet, at the palace. Like, big things were happening for me back then, you know? Rick knew, so he wouldn't bother me too much about skating. But then at the same time, I, I didn't have enough footage. So yeah, it was just kind of messed up. Like, I couldn't balance out my skating and, and, and my music and how much I wanted to play music and how much I wanted to do the music for my video parts and how, how much I didn't know that it really took, you know, for me to be, for me to do this right. Or maybe I did know and that's why I was, I was hesitant about just not being ready to put out stuff. Never did I get a call, it was like, nothing. Nah, man, and that's the good thing. They just let you figure it out, you know? And some people can figure it out and other people just get lost in the whole craze. At the end of the day, it's just, it's gotta skate. Chocolate cut my salary completely. Just never, was never talked about. It was never brought up. There wasn't anything. 
I got an email from Sam Smythe like six months after that, after I wasn't getting paid for them. And then so he's like, but you know, if you can come through with some footage, that would be really great and it would help the situation. How could I do that now when everyone's not there for me? Like help that side of it of like getting stuff done. And then, so that was kind of my situation. And then this, I still think about every day and I, and, and I, I, I always get mad at myself was, so when I got that ultimatum, I was like, all right, so as of right now, I'm thinking in my head, I don't get paid for skateboarding at all. Pretty Sweet was coming out in like two years from then. And he's like, so if you can get some stuff for that, you know, like a part in that, that would help and everything would be good again. And, and, and then, so I wrote this email to Rick. I just wanted to let you know, like, more than anything, I wanna be a part of Pretty Sweet, dude. Like, I wanna be able to go out and film, but I'm gonna need some type of help. Like, give me half of my pay. I was like, give me six months and I'll show it to you and I, that I can get you footage. I sent it to Sam first, and Sam Smythe was like, you put it all out there, like, do you want me to forward this to Rick right now? And I, wrote, and I said, no. And I said, scratch it, it's, don't do it. That kills me to this day, I mean, because, and I have, the, I have it in my outbox still. I just looked at it, every day I can almost think about it, and it bums, bums me out. And you try to give every, every skater the benefit of the doubt of, you know, People go through things for a couple months, maybe a year or something, but you know, everyone does. I mean, you don't wanna just be that kind of company of just kick someone off right away or just, oh, fuck them. You know how much fucking leeway everyone has been given on either of those two brands? You cannot do shit for 10 years. They just leave it up to you. That's their policy. Like, hey, if you want it, the opportunity's here for you, you know? If you don't want to fucking do this, it's on you. Not on us, it's on you. There's been a lot of dudes who are like, cool man, fucking, I fucking made him, bro. I don't have to do shit. Because each single person that probably did that, you could pull them aside and you could probably analyze them and go, oh, we know why he's bitter. We know why he's bitter. Look, they all have the same things in common. They all have this one certain thing in common. Hmm, gee, I wonder why. I was really out of skateboarding for a while because just drugs, or <laughs> whatever, or just, you know, being on, yeah, fucking, yeah, that's, unfortunately, that's a part of my story. So that took, like, a long time to get well, to fix, and then to get healthy again. You can live at 100 miles an hour, but, like, we live in a fantasy world, you know, like, people praise you, t tell you you're great, and you might have this skill or whatever, Everybody loves you, but then like you have to be realistic in this in this game. Like it's gonna be over. <laughs> I don't know if there's been anyone more awesome than Ben. Just when it comes down to actually being realistic about life and the way things are going, like he, I think he called Sam or no, maybe Rick, and was just like, "Hey, man, you know, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. I don't think I'm gonna be able to." give you what you need of me and you know he's like I gotta just move on in life and it's fucking amazing it's like that's some straight up real man shit uh, I called Rick Rick Howard I called him and uh, you know told him straight up you know I didn't want to be labeled as one of those guys that just you know milking the situation you know and just it felt like I wasn't going nowhere and I guess I just you know just changed direction kind of you know I and I always kind of worked on cars as I was skating too so um, I went to school, you know, took a year and a half program, and I just so happened to apply at this place in the city called Altire. So they hired me and then pretty much been here since, man, 15 years deep. That's how you do it. <laughs> kind of felt it coming in a way, you know what I mean? Like, I would say after Pretty Sweet, I was like, fuck, dude, I need to start looking to do something else. And I was bummed, but it's like, fuck, man, you got to move on, you know what I mean? It's like, I guess I reached my highest point I could get over there. <laughs> I mean, dude, just skating is just a gnarly business, I guess. Yeah. If you're not producing, you're gonna fucking get kicked out, right? Yeah. A pro skater should know what they're getting into. Go, oh, it's fucking gonna be skating forever. I mean, at one point you do think that. You do think that, you know, but... Yeah. And people came up to me like, oh, I can't believe fucking... You know, because I work at, a, you know, the Kale store and people see me there like, what are you doing here? I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to make a living, bro. Like, I got bills to pay, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They're like, how could you work here and work at a medical marijuana clinic? People come in here to get their medicine. And I'm like, called a bud tender. It's my Evan Hecox portrait right there. 
Now that I see it clearly, those guys loved me and I loved them because they gave me a chance and we, we, were, we started a good thing and just to be a family, you know? I'm still alive and I'm still skating today and, and then, or I see how most the normal people are and they just never made anything. They've never created it. They've been a part of something so cool, you know? It's amazing, you know? Yeah. I mean, skateboarding, it's, uh, it's been amazing. A really fun part of it, to actually do stuff that you love with your friends, you know, succeeding, and it's a pretty surreal feeling. There's no use in being bitter or anything. You know, I understood, you know, move on, next, the next generation. I'm just glad that these guys are on. I'm glad that they're uh, doing what they do, and Vincent's like one of my favorite kids right now, you know, I love the way he skates. I really looked up to Gabriel Rodriguez. I liked his skating a whole lot. Like, I thought it was just something different, doing all that crazy stuff on picnic tables. And um, of course, Keenan, because it was just so much power and like finesse, and that was super good. And uh, Richard Mulder. I wish I could skate with Richard Mulder still. I think with every, everything has to evolve, even chocolate, right? It's a skateboard company, but it's a business too. And I feel like chocolate has evolved amazing. I think Vincent really embodies like chocolate. Like personally, I, I, Vincent's like one of my favorite skaters on chocolate. I just, I love watching that dude push. Uh, I think all those dudes, Stevie, Raven. Stevie reminds me of just like, if he was our age back when chocolate started, he'd be on chocolate. Like he's just, like him and Vincent, like just that OG, like Hispanic LA kid, you know what I mean? Like which is sick. Their whole shit, you know? Fucking your own chocolate, like that's always been like, for me, like the dope, dope shit since I, I was a kid, you know? Just like that whole team, and I used to see them like, during the time they were filming for like, yeah, right? Fucking Howard and Carol, pretty much like the whole squad. Even like when I see Elijah skate, Elijah reminds me of like a gnarly Venice local dude that rips. That's why I like Elijah. I mean, he's kind of a local kid too. He grew up around Venice, Santa Monica area. I like the whole vibe of like the like East LA, like downtown, like kind of like just rugged, you know, skating through the streets vibe. And to where a girl still has that, you know, but they also got like super clean skaters, you know, like chocolate just is, I mean, it just seems all around rugged just getting it, you know, which is sick. Although it makes all the old videos and stuff just look that much cooler. Put the weed down and start skating, motherfuckers. And Raven, get off the fucking half pipe, dude. Get on the street. I mean, I think it's rad Raven's on chocolate. I don't think no chocolates board has been in the air that high before. You know what I mean? Like, that's what's rad about Raven. I think Mike and Rick, they, they do, uh, they know how to really pick good skateboard talent, like Sam Smythe as well. Like, and I think having a crew called the Trunk Boys, and they bring like a diversity to the brand. Yeah, those dudes are amazing. Trunk Boys, I think, uh, started in a, on a trip to South America and Nicaragua. And I think Rick McCrank um, just named them all in the back because I think they're just playing their music in the back, drinking, just had their little crew. So I think. McCrank just started calling them the Trunk Boys, and then that's how that all started. I fucking love the Trunk Boys! Yeah! That's what's up! That's what's up! So it's cool to go on tour and see those dudes st still, it, they're like, they're in it now, you know? Like how we were, we didn't have shit to do but fuck around and skate. Nobody was a homeowner, nobody was married, nobody had kids, like we were just, and it's rad to see those dudes in that now, to look back and go, Oh, dude, that's just the best shit ever. Hey, Robert. Hit spike one. And action. Get ready, Eli. Dude, filming with Ty is like every day is like a like an adventure. You never know where you're gonna go, and if you do have a spot in mind, he has another spot on the way or another spot to hit at the end of the day. And it's super fun. Sometimes, though, it's like you get to a spot and, you know, I'm sure he's expecting somebody to get something on it. So it's kind of like, I push myself. Wow. <laughs> Damn. I, mean, I like skating with Ty. It was 
sick because he just picked me up from the house, you know, and dropped me back off. And he already had spots. He was like, well, if you don't know what to do, you know, we got, we got these spots. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard thinking of a spot, you know. So when you watch Pretty Sweet, you weren't like, what the fuck is this shit? No way, dude. I was feeling it, man. I was like, dude. I was like, hell yeah. I knew how all those dudes felt. But at our time, our production was that huge. Like for the time, you know what I'm saying? If we was 2014, yeah, there would be helicopters and confetti and shit like that. Wouldn't it be us doing that shit? You know what I mean? Instead, it was us in the van filming with Spike with I mean, Ray Barry at the, at the store with Keenan and stuff. So it was like crazy, you know? Sophia Coppola in the dang picking Gino up, that's her, like helping Gino when he gets hit by the car. That's like, come on, man, like, that was like the fireboards, the way that was. It was like, you know, Richard Mulder doing all these gnarly tricks on the bench. We was genuinely like, yeah. Like when Mark almost blew up, that was gnarly, dude. That blunt slide, now I fought. That was crazy. I remember they was like getting extra, like, let's put more. <laughs> What's the uh, the coffee drink that you get? Oh, it's uh, you just get you get coffee and horchata, and it's a dirty whore. Speaking of the dirty whore, can we get another guy on chocolate? Let's get like somebody who's seasoned. Enough of these young dumb stoners. No offense, guys. Yeah, okay. we don't want anyone smoking their weed. You guys ready to order? Jerry's cool and he rips and he's an awesome skater. He's fun to skate with, so it's cool to have someone. New like that, like not a young kid too, especially where you're like, don't know if he's gonna be cool or not. Like someone who's been on the road for a while. I feel like it's good that they kind of get older dudes on the team, cause they'll be more loyal. He has like a pretty distinct style and um, cool like bag of tricks, and I'm pretty stoked, dude, on that. It's been a while since we had somebody new. Things start to evolve, and like chocolate still has its has its like original flavor, but it has to kind of like grow. Over the years, I feel like when they added new people, it kind of would change chocolate, but always in a good way. In my eyes, hands down, it's the best. Everybody on that company just has great style and they're just having fun. Nowadays, you go to a skate park, every kid is good. You're like blown away, you're like, wow, this is, I mean, to start skateboarding at a high level is what skateboarding is nowadays. Now what it comes down to, I think, is like attitude. When you're skating with them, it's the same thing. It's like there's like they're guys you want to hang out with. I don't think the companies have to be literally like exactly like what they were, but they have to always be. The spirit always has to stay true, and you know the guys. And also, just when people are that good, it's so fun to film them. I mean, I have a lot of respect for those dudes. I've set up and watched the girl video, and really tripped on the generations that has you know that they was able to stay relevant and, and with, withstand time through the hardships, the, the highs, the kids really still looking at chocolate as a, as a dope brand to be a part of, dope family to be a part of, and to rep the legacy of what we seen coming up. Those, those are the dudes that pioneered the came before me, those are my peers. So do you, like know your history, that's how I look at it. If you never skated for Girl of Chocolate, you always wanted to skate for Girl of Chocolate. And if you never made it on a team, yo, shut up, man. Just watch the damn tape. Tuck roll, nice mini tiger roll. You think I didn't notice that? I notice everything you do. You're the best. You're the fucking best. You slam this, I'll fucking take off all my clothes and run through this park for two minutes. All right. You know that I will. But you got don't. Yeah. Okay. Fuck. 